Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am Lari from Gold Polished. I love sharing everything about nails, nail art, and beauty, and a lot of other things, but I mainly focus on nails, and today I'm gonna be sharing with you my favorite nail products. So some of these products I've been using for years, they're tried and true, I love them, I've used them, I've reused them a million times, I've repurchased them. Anyway, you get the point. <laughs> so they're good nail products. Some of these I've used just for a little while, and I've been trying out, and I just wanna share all these with you. I will put links to everything down in the description bar below so you guys can click on those and find any of the products that I've talked about. If you have any favorite products that you like as well, put them down in the comments down below. I always like to try new things out and if there's something that you saw, seriously, she just destroyed my bed. <laughs> Every day. Viper! Penny, I told you no. Oh my goodness. Okay, whatever, we're leaving that. So anyway, put those down in the comments down below so that I can check them out too. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is nail polish remover. This is pretty important to me. I've tried a lot of different brands. I've tried Target brands, Walmart brands. I've tried kind of inexpensive nail polish removers. And while they do work, although I would say not very well, they do get the job done. If you're on a budget, those are fine. They'll just take a little bit more time and maybe a little bit more product. So this is a little bit more expensive than that. This is called Zoya Remove Plus. It's my all-time favorite. I tried to go without it a couple months ago and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I've been using this for probably seven or eight years, you guys. It's so good. I think it does have a little bit of acetone in it, but it's not going to dry out your nails. It's just so good. I just love it so much. It has this pump lid to it that you can see here, and I love that you can just twist it. It does lock. You can untwist it and press your cotton pad on top and then pump down and get exactly just the right amount of product. One thing I also like about it is that it is refillable, so I can untwist this top here and I can refill it. So I do like to buy this 32 ounce bottle here. As you can see, I've probably refilled that two or three times by now and I can probably fill it two more times at least out of this. So um, it's a really good value. You can get Zoya on Amazon and on their website as well, but I will link those down below. I also like their little travel size one. For when I travel, I always take this one because I just can't live without it. It's so good, you guys. If you haven't tried it, you definitely need to try it. I also like to mention that I do like this Olive and June nail polish remover pot. It works for quite a long time. After a while it does get discolored and can leave a little bit of color on your nails, but I think it does a really good job. This would be a good option for traveling. I have also, when it's gotten a little dried out, poured more of my remover inside of it just to refresh it and that has worked too, but I really do like this quite a bit. I also can't live with acetone. There's many different brands for acetone. I consistently use this one just because it's not too expensive and I can get it at my local beauty store, but sometimes I will order off Amazon as well. I use this to clean my nail art brushes in between colors. I'll put them in a little dish and just clean them off and wipe them off on a towel. And then I will clean around the edges of my nail when I paint my nails. And that's really what's gonna make a huge difference in your manicure is cleaning up that outer edge because nobody applies it perfectly. <laughs> Unless you've been doing this for a really long time, then you probably do, but this is really going to make a big difference in your at-home manicure. Can't live without acetone. All the things that we do to our nails can be drying, especially nail polish remover and acetone. So I do like to use nail oils and different things to moisturize my hands and my cuticles just to keep them looking nice. This is probably the most asked question I get is cuticle care. So I'm gonna go into this a little bit and show you some close-up videos here. My most favorite is CND Solar Oil and I need to get another bottle. They do have bigger bottles that you can get for a better price. This is my favorite. It is greasy. All these oils are gonna be a little bit greasy, but that's okay. I like to just let them sit there and soak in. After I'm done with the manicure, I will just go around the edges and apply this cuticle oil and then rub it in carefully and let it sit there while I'm letting my nail polish dry and that gives it time to moisturize that area. Some other oils that I like are this California mango oil. I do have to say I like CND oil a little bit more, but I think this is a better bang for your buck. And I really love these Glisten and Glow cuticle pens. They have many different scents. Yeah, these are oils, so they're gonna be a little bit greasy. I do like their scents as well, and they'll have like holiday scents as well. They smell so good, and I love them. They're easy to apply. They're easy to keep in your purse, on your nightstand, anywhere. I highly recommend keeping something like this with you where you go 
throughout the day. I like to apply cuticle oil two or three times a day and I really notice a difference when I do that. When I don't, I also notice a difference. If you want something that's a little bit lighter, I love this Olive and June cuticle serum pen here. It's so nice. It has this nice little twist thing. It has a little foam applicator. It's non-greasy and it does moisturize and it's nice to use if you're working maybe on a computer or something. You want to apply it throughout the day but you don't want your hands greasy so that's a good option too. I really do like this quite a bit. Okay, probably my most favorite to do though, if I don't do it in the morning, I always make sure I do it at night is I use Aquaphor. So I have this big tub by my bed and I just like to pull it out and just get a little bit of that Aquaphor and just rub it really nicely into my cuticles and around my skin, around my nails and just let that soak all night and it's really going to give you a good amount of moisture. That's my favorite thing to do. I've been doing this for a really long time. It's also really good for your lips. So I'll apply it on my lips before I go to bed too. I used to have dry crack lips all the time years ago until I started using this and I just can't live without it. It's such a good product. I've tried using Vaseline as well, but for some reason I just really prefer Aquaphor. I don't know what it is. I think their ingredients are slightly different, but it's just much better than Vaseline for some reason in my opinion. In the winter months, I will also keep this Aquaphor in my car just because because I know I need a lot more moisture during that time, especially where I live because it's really dry. I will switch to this in the winter time because I need something a little bit heavier. Let's get into hand creams. I've been trying many different hand creams and serums and as we're getting into the winter months, I'm noticing I like things that are a little bit heavier. In the summer, I like things that are a little bit lighter and I think that's just gonna depend on your climate and where you live. But let's talk about some of the serums. Olive and June came out with a new hand serum. It's very close to their cuticle serum. It's really lightweight. It does have some really nice ingredients in here. It's got grapeseed oil, mango pulp extract, and it also has avocado oil, which I think are all good ingredients for your skin as far as moisturization goes. So I like it. It is very light though. This one doesn't really have a scent, which I think sometimes is nice in a cream because sometimes those scents can be drying. Another one I've been trying is this Naked Manicure Hand and Body Cream by Zoya, and I like this one too. It's a little bit heavier than the Olive in June, but it's still a little bit light. This one has a really nice soft light scent. I can't quite put my finger on what it is but I will look it up but it's got a really nice scent and I like it. I've been using it. I've been keeping this by my nightstand and this one in my car so I've really enjoyed these two quite a bit but in the winter months nothing can really beat this glove and care hand cream. So my husband's a dentist. He's a kid's dentist and orthodontist and I work in his office from time to time and this is the cream that we have at the office just because wearing gloves all the time can be really drying and you can find this on Amazon. It is the best hand cream. It's really thick and I really feel like I'm getting really good moisture especially in the winter months when I need it the most and I've been pulling it out more and reaching for it more and sometimes I'll just take one from the office but you can order it for yourself too. It's really nice. So it's got an okay scent. It's really light but I really think it works well and I just need it in the winter time. Let's expand a little bit more on nail care. So I do like to use a strengthening polish here and there and I definitely can use it. I genetically have peeling nails and I've tried lots of different things. I've taken pretty good care of my nails and whatever I do I still tend to have peeling nails but it's okay if you have peeling nails. You can still have nice manicure. Um, you just need to know how to take care of the peeling nails if you have them. So that just goes to show like if you have peeling nails don't give up on a good manicure because I have pilling nails all the time. You can't really tell underneath the polish. I do like to use, this is my very favorite nail strengthener and it's Nail Envy. It's just really rich. I can tell it's really rich because <laughs> if I don't clean the top off very well, it can get like little black spots on it, which makes me feel like it's very rich in nutrients. And so that makes me feel like it's a really good product. So I just make sure I keep that really, really clean just so my product is staying clean. But it just does a good job in strengthening now, when I wear these, I only wear them for a couple weeks at a time. I've noticed if I wear them longer, my nails can get too hard and they have a tendency to just break off. But this is really good for strengthening peeling nails. And I'll wear it underneath nail polish or by itself for a couple weeks at a time and then I'll take a break until I feel like I need it again. So it's a really good product. I've been using it for years. It's a little bit more pricey, but it really lasts a long time. So I've probably had this bottle for over a year and so it's gonna last me a really long time. Another one that I've been trying out the last like three months is this Ella and Mina nail strengthener and it smells so good. It's called First Aid Kiss. It smells like watermelon. It's got a nice 
my scent and I really feel like it's been doing a good job. I don't think it's as good as OPI Nail Envy, but I do think for the price, it does a pretty good job. Let's talk a little bit more about cuticles. So I'm gonna get into a cuticle remover. When I do like to remove the thin cuticle layer that grows up my nail, I do like to use this instant cuticle remover. This is my favorite one. I used to use a different kind years ago, but I feel like that one made my nail bed really greasy and I don't want a greasy nail bed, especially right before I'm gonna paint my nails. So I really do like this one a lot. You just squeeze a little bit of product around the base of your nails, let it sit for a minute, and then come in with your cuticle tool and push those cuticles back and you can get rid of excess cuticles and you'll wipe it off on a towel there and you will see that you really get a lot of that off of there. It really does a good job and it's at a really good price. I highly recommend this cuticle remover. A lot of people use this one. And my favorite cuticle removing tool is this one by Tweezerman. I'll put a link to it, of course. It's just my favorite. I've tried other ones, but I always go back to this one. Um, I also use orange sticks here and there. I use them for different things. I use them to remove gel polish or to clean up or to push my cuticles. So orange sticks are just a really good thing to have when you like to paint your nails. Okay, nail files. My favorite nail file to use is this Nail Tech Crystal File. And I have heard different artists say um, that you can go back and forth when filing if you're using a glass nail file. I'm not a professional. I don't know. I do go back and forth just because mainly I'm lazy. But I love this crystal nail file. It does a good job. It doesn't tear up the spots that are peeling on my nails when I use it. And it's just really nice and gentle and it works well. So this is my favorite. It's a little bit pricey, but it's gonna last you a really long time. I do also like Tropical Shine. I think that's a good brand as well. And these are available on Amazon too. Like to have some that are heavier grit and a smaller grit and a good mixture. So this is more fine for just like buffing and smoothing. And then I really do like Olive and June's nail file that comes in their little kit. And it just does a really good job. It's a good grit and I find myself reaching for this one quite a bit. I love this INM. I'm gonna try to find it on Amazon. I got it at a local beauty store, but it's this nice little buffing block and it's so nice for just finishing off after you file, smoothing everything out, getting those little edges that can be left sometimes, and then buffing the top of my nail just slightly before I get into painting. So I really love this so much. As far as removing pads go, I really do like to use cotton rounds. They can leave little fuzzies on your nails and sometimes that bothers me. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't really mind, but I really like the amount of remover that you can get on there. I can just use one or two pumps and get a really nice amount on there and it does a good job removing, but it can leave little fuzzies. If I am doing gel or I'm just not in the mood to deal with little fuzzies, <laughs> I really have been liking these OPI Expert touch. They are a little bit more money, so I don't use them all the time, just in those certain circumstances, but they're lint-free nail wipes. They actually do hold quite a bit more remover than I thought they would because they're very thin, but they work very well, so I really like these quite a bit. Okay, now we're going to get into some other tools that you might not need, but I have found myself really liking to use. This one is definitely not an expert tool, but I found that it really just works for me. This is a little bit more advanced, and you have to be really careful when using these, but I really love this nail file drill for taking off dry areas around my nail and just really cleaning up the cuticle. This one's fairly inexpensive. I think it was around $30 and I feel like it just works for me and does a good job. I don't really wanna invest in something that's more expensive just because this one works. When I'm doing gel and even just polish, sometimes I don't like to use a serum. I like to keep my nail bed dry and ungreasy because if it's greasy, that polish is not gonna to adhere to your nail as well. And so I've really been liking this to clean around my cuticle just at the base of the nail and then using that cuticle pusher to scrape any excess that's left after that and I found that these two tools working together do a really good job and I just have to say you have to be really careful when you're using this the first time I tried it I realized I was pushing a little bit too hard and you can make little indents in your nail so I just want to let you know that I found the right pressure now that I need to use the more that I've worked with it and I've just really really enjoyed this tool it comes with little nail bits of different sizes and different lengths that you can use for different things and I really like it. Now that we're on the subject of larger tools that are a little bit more expensive I'm going to talk about this next one and this is the Emope Petty 
callus remover. I really love this tool and I need it in the winter. I get dry cracked hills. Sorry, this is probably gross, but hey, we all have to take care of our feet. And especially now with COVID, maybe you're not getting to the salon as much as you want to. It's really nice to have this to do your own pedicures to make sure you're taking care of your feet. And this does a really good job. So you just click it on and it just shaves the back of your heel. It's so nice. I like to put a towel down when I use this just because it can be a little bit dusty. I've noticed when I look online, they have some that has a shield in it to prevent that. Um, but this is an older version. I've had this for several years and it still works very good. And I just rely on this, especially in the winter time to help keep my feet looking nice. This would be a good Christmas present for anybody, a friend. I've really enjoyed using it and I felt like it's done a really good job. Okay, so I also wanna bring up this Olive and June Poppy. This is the new one that that came in their winter kit and I love the color of it so much but I don't use this all the time just because I've been painting nails for a while and I really have gotten used to holding a brush and it's not too hard for me but if you are a little bit newer trying to paint your nails and it's maybe a little bit difficult for you because there is a little bit of a learning curve this is going to be really helpful for you what you do is you take your lid off your nail polish bottle you turn the brush to where you want it and line it up stick it in the top of your nail polish bottle and then place this on top Get it on there pretty firmly. You don't have to push all the way down and then you can pull your brush out and you just have a handle that's a little bit easier to hold and manage while you're trying to paint your nails. So I do find this useful for people who maybe are a little bit more inexperienced and are trying things out just because I think it's helpful. Okay, let's talk about base coats and top coats. That's the number one question I get asked all the time. I have three favorite top coats. I've tried several. These are the ones I use all the time. My most number one favorite is Glisten and Glow Top top coat. It is so nice. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit more gel-like, so it's going to give you that nice gel-like squishy look, which is my favorite look for nails. And it just goes on so nicely, as you can see as I'm applying it. It's very thick and smooth, and it just lasts a long time, and it does a good job, and it really leaves this high gloss finish. My most favorite top coat for sure. Then my second favorite is this Essie Gel Couture Platinum Top Coat, and this is with their Gel Couture line. But yes, I do use it for regular polishes as well. I get asked that question all the time too. You can use it with whatever polishes you want. It's up to you. Um, whenever I wear the Essie Gel Couture, I always use this so because I like to keep kind of consistent with that but I also use it with other brands as well this one's a little bit thinner so if you like a top coat that's a little bit thinner um, maybe a little bit easier to work with this is going to be the one that you probably would like better it's very long lasting I can get my polish to last at least five or six days with these if I use a gel couture polish with them I can get about eight to ten days of wear out of it it has a really nice shine and it's an excellent top coat. I've also really been enjoying Olive and June's top coat. It reminds me a lot of the SE Gel Couture. It's a little bit thinner, maybe a tiny bit thicker than that one. And it's long lasting as well. I have noticed, I just don't like the shine as much as Glisten and Glow, but it still has a really great shine. For some reason, it's just a little bit different and I can't quite put my finger on it, but just the thickness of the Glisten and Glow is what I like. But this one's long lasting too. Whenever I wear Olive in June, I always be consistent and stick with this one for the most part. And so this is a good top coat as well. Okay, let's talk about base coat. I've been a little lazy about applying a base coat lately, but it is really important. My most favorite one I don't have because I ran out and that's why I really haven't been using it, but I do have other ones. So <laughs> anyway, it's CND Sticky Base Coat. That's my most favorite one. It is blue in color. I really like that one a lot. I have recently purchased Glisten and Glow. I've used this a few times and I feel like it's really good too. I'm really going to give this one a good try. I've been using CND Sticky Base for a really long time, but I'm going to start using this one. So I do think this would be a really good one. They make really good products, so I can trust that it'll be a good base coat. But I'll let you know as I do more research. And I also like SE First Base. I think that's what it's called. Base coat. This just says base coat. It might have been called first base before. I don't know. I used to have that name in my head, but it just says base coat. <laughs> so I really like this one. I like the ones that are tinted a little bit blue. I think that counteracts the yellow um, hue that your nails can tend to turn when you paint your nails a lot. So I do think that helps a little bit. Now we're going to talk about brushes and some things I like to use for nail art. So this is the e.l.f. concealer brush. It's in this package. I like to keep a few on hand. I will show you a close-up of the brush though. It's just a nice cleanup brush. I've been using it for a really long time. It's very inexpensive. You can get it at Target 
and it's just a really good brush. I like to use this. I dip it in acetone and I clean up around the base of my nails like I showed you previously with the acetone, but it's just good for that. Alvin June has a good one too that comes in their kit if you have their kit, um, but I this is just easy to buy and cheap and simple and so it's just my favorite. I've been using it for probably 10 years. I like to use the e.l.f. angled brush that you can use to put oil along your cuticles just because I really can take control of that oil and make sure I don't get it on my nails right after I paint them when I'm applying the oil to give it time to soak into my skin while my nails are waiting to dry and so I really like the control that I can get with that angled brush and I use it all the time when I apply oil when I'm painting my nails. Okay if you if you like to do nail art, a silicone mat is a must. I really love these so much. I use it all the time. The polish dries on them and then you can peel it off, which is actually quite satisfying. <laughs> And then if there's any bits that are left, you can use a cotton swab and just wipe it clean. And they're just so nice to use for nail art. You just put your color on there and you can use it as like your palette. So it's so great. If I don't have this, I'll use a paper plate with that wax finish on it just so that it doesn't soak up the polish. But I'll use that too. But really, if you're doing nail art all the time, you really need a silicone mat. They're just so great. I like to use these dotting tools. Whenever I'm doing nail art, I reach for these a lot. They usually come in a pack of four or five and I have bought them once and use them all the time. They last a long time. They have different sizes on both ends, which is really nice for different designs. I really love Winstonia brand nail art brushes. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that whenever I do a nail art tutorial, I'm mostly saying this is my Winstonia brush. These ones in this pack are a little bit thicker, which is nice for areas that have a little bit more polish on them. And so, but the one I use mostly out of this pack is this striper and is excellent for doing straight lines on your nails. So I like this pack here. And my most used pack is this Winstonia nail art brush, the Berry Wine brushes. And I think they have they don't call them that anymore, but they used to. And these are very thin and perfect for little details on your nail designs. They're inexpensive. I think you can get the three pack for like seven or eight bucks. Such a good deal. I need to order some new ones. Mine are starting to look kind of gross, but I love these. They're tried and true. I use them all the time. They're dependable and I reach for this, these three all the time. Okay. That was a lot of products. If you made it through, whew, good job. But I really do love these products. I've used them for a long time. If you've tried them, let me know in the comments down below um, if you like them. Tell me which ones you think you might grab. I think it's a good time to grab these, maybe for a friend for the holidays or for yourself for the holidays to stick in your stocking because it's really nice to do your own manicure at home. It's just so nice and relaxing and I really do enjoy it so much and I hope you guys enjoy it too. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful and thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.